One of the biggest breakthroughs that we experience as guitar players is when we finally start to understand the guitar, right? You can call this like fretboard knowledge. Maybe uh, you learn the cage system uh, or, you know, you put music theory on the neck. It doesn't really matter how you get there. The idea is that when you start to understand the instrument, you change it from a thing that you just apply blobs of information like dots, chord diagrams, just blobs of dots to, and you change it to a tool that you can use to sort of bring musical information through it, right? Big, big difference. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn the most important piece of information in the universe. Now that universe is the guitar verse. It's the universe that you and I like best, right? The universe where every it's all guitars all the time. That's a great place to be. In that universe, the most important piece of information is the major scale. Now I'm going to explain what the major scale is just so we're on the same page. You may already know what the major scale is, but you should stick around because I'm going to do some cool stuff when we zoom in and I'll put the major scale directly on the fretboard and then I'll show you how everything you already know, every piece of information you know, as well as every piece of information that you don't know yet relates back to the major scale. Before we get started, if you're enjoying this channel, you like the content I produce, maybe you've had a couple of aha moments here, you just like the style with which I teach, consider supporting the channel through Patreon or a donation. Links to those two methods of supporting the channel are always in the description of every video. If you do decide to put your back behind the channel, I thank you in advance. Okay, the major scale, any scale, is a series of notes that is separated by intervals, and intervals are just the distance between notes. The way that's expressed on the fretboard is on frets. So the distance of one fret to another is an interval. One fret to two frets above is another interval. Three frets, yet another one. The major scale has a very, very specific set of intervals. And that structure of intervals creates the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do scale. That creates that sound. That sound has been used through Western music for centuries as a way to describe music and as a ruler, this kind of ruler, not this kind of ruler, as a place where we can measure things. So all of the other information around music, and I'm talking about Western music here, is relatable to the major scale. So you can use the major scale to generate chords. You can use the major scale, you can alter the major scale into the minor scale. You can use the major scale and you can turn it into a pentatonic scale. Like all of the information that is cataloged, everything is cataloged against the major scale as sort of the reference point, the standard reference point that we either use or alter to create all kinds of new information. That's what the major scale is. Let's zoom in and stick it on the fretboard where it belongs and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get the major scale down on the neck. You may already know the major scale, but just check this out. Here's a G. I'm going to just start with G major. That's the major scale. That's a G major scale. And as you can hear, it has that Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do sound. Now you can play this scale all over the neck in many, many different ways, right? those notes appear and reappear all over the fretboard. You can use open strings. You can play it in a single position. You can span multiple positions. You can start it on a different string. You can play it through two octaves. You can play it all the way across the neck. You owe it to yourself, any information that you have, you owe it to yourself to map it to the whole neck. But we're just gonna look at the major scale. We're just gonna look at this one thing for now. I'm gonna play it like this. So it's a little bit easier to see. Now, the formula for the scale, in other words, that intervallic design, how does the scale sound the way it does because of the intervals in the scale? Let's just put the scale down here. The, the formula is simply the numbers of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven notes in the scale. 
and the distance between the notes is the structure of the scale itself. That, that intervallic design provides the sound of the scale. Between the root and the second note is a whole step. Between the second and the third note of the scale is a whole step. Between the third and the fourth note is a half step. I'm just moving that note down to the next string. Between the four and the five, another whole step. Between the five and the six, another whole step. Six and seven, another whole step. Again, I'm just moving that note down to the next string. And then between the seven and the root is a half step. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So that's the intervallic design of the scale. That design gives the scale its sound. Now the notes of the G major scale, when you string them together like this, are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Right, so there's all of our information about the scale. We've got the notes, we've got the formula, we've got it on the fretboard. Let's just take a piece of information like this. Here's our G chord, right? How does this G major chord relate to the G major scale? It has to relate some way. I'm gonna do this pretty quickly, but I'm just gonna find out what notes are in this, in this chord. Here's a G, here's a B, open D, open G, third fret on the B string is another D, third fret on the E string, is another G. Right? So we've got G's, B's, and D's. And as you can see, the G's, B's, and D's come from the scale, and it's basically building a chord from the first note of the scale using the root, the third, and the fifth. That's how we get our G chord. In fact, chords come from scales. That chord is built from the notes of a G major scale, starting on that root and using the root, the third, and the fifth, sort of going every other note. Okay, so then I learn a song that goes like this. G, down to E minor, C, and then to D. Well, we already know where the G chord comes from, right? song sounds like it's in the key of G. We keep coming back to G. G is important. Let's see how E minor relates to this G scale. I'm going to quickly just go through the notes of the E minor chord. Here's E. Here's B. Here's another E. Here's a G, a B, and another E. So as you can see, the notes from the E minor chord also come from the G major scale and they're built off the sixth note. So this is the first chord for G. That's the sixth chord. You've heard this kind of thing before, right? Let's check out the C chord. The notes in the C chord are C, E, here's G, another C, and another E. C, E, and G. As you can see, the C chord is built from the G scale from the fourth degree. So what we have here is root, sort of one, six, four, and then of course the D chord. You know what's gonna happen here. D, A, D, and F sharp. D, F sharp, and A all come from that G major scale as well, built off of the fifth degree. So what we have here is one, six, heard that kind of thing before. One, six, four, five, one, four, five, right? Those numbers relate to where you build the chord from inside the scale. Let's take a whole different idea. What about the G minor pentatonic scale? Surely that can't be related to the G major scale. They're totally different. Pentatonic has five notes in it. G major has seven notes in it. How can it possibly be related? Here's the formula for a minor pentatonic scale. It's root, flat three, four, five, flat seven. Doesn't even have the same amount of notes in it, but let's see if we can build it using this G major scale. So root, same. I don't have to play the two. The three is flat, it's a flat three. So when I flat something, I just move it down in pitch. So here's root, flat three, 
4 and 5 stay the same. 7 is flat, so I move it down a half step. So I've changed the major scale into the minor pentatonic scale just by altering that formula, right? I've related it to the major scale and I've built it from that scale. Using the major scale as sort of my my DNA, my sort of DNA strand. Here's the material that I'm going to use to build this new thing. Okay, now I'm learning a new song. It's great. I love this song. Oh, there's a weird chord in it. I'm looking at a chord chart and it says A diminished. Well, I don't know an A diminished chord. So I do a little research and I find out that the diminished chord has a formula as well. It's root, flat three, flat five. But it's not G, I need an A diminished. So I'm gonna move my scale up to A. Let's keep everything the same. The intervals, everything's the same. But I'm starting on A now, right? Because I need an A diminished chord. So the notes I need are the root, got that. Here's that flat three again. And now they want me to use the flat five. flat three, my flat five. I'm just going to quickly figure out what notes these are. This is an A, this is a C, this is an E flat. But I have to play it as a chord. Here's an A, a C, and an E flat. I'm playing an A diminished chord. I can do it here too. A, C, E flat. just learned a new chord that I didn't know before. Grab that formula, move the scale up, did the math, bam. I can play an A diminished chord, right? Pretty cool. Okay, here's another one. I'm learning a Steve Vai solo. Wow, I really love Steve Vai. He's so great. It says in this interview that he's using the A harmonic minor scale. Well, I don't know that scale. What am I going to do? I do a little research. I find out that the formula for the A harmonic minor scale is root 2 flat three, four, five, flat six, seven root. So here's my A major scale. And if I just change the three and the six, it looks like I can play A harmonic minor. Root, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, seven root. Let's check it out. Very cool, right? I've just heard something, a reference to Steve Vai playing a scale that I didn't know, did some research, found the formula, brought it in, changed my A major scale into A harmonic minor. Okay, so hopefully we've just seen how important the major scale actually is. Every single piece of information that we get, the new information that we get, the information that we already have, we can attach to and relate to the major scale. That fundamental piece of information, that scaffolding, if you will, the structure of the major scale, is how we start to really gain fretboard knowledge. Once you put the major scale on the fretboard, then all of that new information, just like I showed, can be applied to it and you can start to really see it on the neck. And this allows you to take that turn to make that transition from a guitar player into a musician who plays the guitar, right? Because now you have command of that major scale. And as we've already seen, every piece of information relates to it. You can create anything you need with that kind of knowledge. I hope you found this lesson informative. I hope you found it useful. And I'll see you next time. All right, so that's number one. Tangled up in wires. Wires everywhere. Always tangled up in wires.